Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be doing the heavily requested follow-up to my BOS video because yes, this is the haiku video. Now I was going to do this video regardless but it was really cool to see the amount of people that commented on my BOS video saying yeah we'd love to see a video on haiku. So I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who requested this. Now you may be asking yourself, what on earth is haiku? Well, we're not talking about poems today. No, 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 this is the open source spiritual successor to BOS that is still developed and maintained to this day. In fact, the latest release came out in December of 2022, which is pretty brilliant. Just like today's video sponsor, Brilliant.org, who I'll be talking more about later on. Haiku itself has been around since the early 2000s, pretty much right around the time B Incorporated got bought up by Palm, who eventually discontinued BOS. Back then, the project was known as OpenBOS, but eventually they changed the name to avoid any potential trademark disputes with Palm. And the name Haiku has a bit of an interesting origin story. Yes, it's obviously named after the poetry form, but it's also a bit of a nod to the error messages of all things that were displayed in BOS's web browser, Net Positive. Because instead of regular messages or error codes, these took the form of Haikus. Yeah, it's probably the most creative way to display an error message that I've ever seen in an operating system. But this was a community effort. The OpenBOS team ran a poll to decide the new name, and Haiku was the winner. Not Haiku OS, as many people tend to call it, but simply Haiku. The reason why so many people call it Haiku OS is because of the domain name HaikuOS.org, which is only used because the developers have had trouble getting their hands on the Haiku.org domain. But anyways, just like its adoptive parent, let's say, Haiku is not a Linux distro and it's not based on Linux at all. In fact, it's not even based on BOS. Though it does use some BOS code as it contains newer iterations of both the desk bar and tracker file manager that B incorporated open source shortly before their demise. What it is based on is the new OS kernel, which was written by a former B employee. And it often gets grouped in with BOS and called the modern version of BOS because it basically is. I mean, technicalities aside, because I know some people love those, this is the OS to use if you have some old BOS program that you need to run on a modern system because it's your best chance at doing that. And it's a great way to try out what BOS was like if you don't have a way of installing it because the user interface is extremely similar, if not identical, and you can use modern programs as well because a bunch have been ported over. Plus, the system requirements aren't that demanding at all. Haiku can run on a Pentium-based system with 400 megabytes of RAM, but they do recommend at least a Pentium 4 with half a gigabyte of RAM. So we're going to be using a Pentium 4, though this computer right here has one gigabyte of RAM instead of half a gigabyte, so we are a little bit over the recommended system requirements. Uh, this is actually the 2000s Mystery PC that I did a video on a while back. This was a viewer donation from Hero Rare Heart. Thank you very much once again. And you can see we've got Haiku installed, or wait, no we don't, because this is actually running off of the CD. Uh, yes, because Haiku provides a live CD. That's one of the really nice things about it. So you can put in this CD on one of your spare computers or in a virtual machine or whatever you want to use it on and just try it out before actually installing it to your hard drive. But we are going to install it to our hard drive. So we're going to double click on the installer right here to bring that up and we'll click on continue. And the first thing it'll do is let us know that it couldn't find any partitions to install Haiku on. So we're going to create one. We'll go into drive setup here and select the empty space on our drive because there's nothing on this and we're going to create a new BFS partition. Now the BFS or B file system this was the 64-bit capable journaling file system that BOS uses and Haiku makes use of it as well so we're going to write changes we'll format it to the B file system and continue and we'll just go with all the default values here and select format and write changes and it's been formatted. So now we'll close out of drive setup. We go back into here and we should be able to select Haiku. So we're gonna install from Haiku the disk onto Haiku the hard drive and we'll hit begin. And that's all there is to it. We'll let it do its thing. And we're done. So we're just gonna quit out of the installer and we'll go up here to the Haiku menu and go to shut down. We'll restart the system. And here's the Haiku boot screen. One of the things I love about this is they made it more modernized looking compared to what BOS had, but they kept the like grayscale to full color fading of the applications that are 
uh, on the boot screen there to kind of, you know, show the uh, boot process, you know, how far that you've gotten along. So that's a nice touch. And here we are on the desktop. So if you used BOS back in the day, this will look very familiar to you. You'll feel right at home. And that is by design because Haiku is meant to be easily switchable to from somebody who is using BOS. So you've got the same UI elements. You've got the desk bar up here, though they have applied a modern coat of paint to all this stuff. So compared to the BOS desk bar, the Haiku one looks more modern, more sleek. Uh, which I think is definitely a nice touch. So we'll go to the about menu here. So you can see the exact version number that we're running. Uh, this is a Pentium 4 with hyper threading. So it shows up as having two processors, 2.79 gigahertz, and we've got around one gigabyte of memory. And it even shows the system uptime as well down here. Now let's get into some of the things that makes Haiku different from BOS. One of those things is replicants. Now these were a thing in BOS, but I just didn't really touch on them in my BOS video. But replicants, you can think of them as widgets or gadgets. They're basically little applets that can run on your desktop uh, even when the application that it pertains to is closed. So for example here, this about dialog has a replicant and that's indicated by this little hand icon down here. So what I can do if I want to sort of pin this application to my desktop and have it as a running widget of sorts, I can just drag this little hand icon and you see it makes a nice outline here and I just drag it wherever I want on the desktop and let go. And now this information will be displayed on the desktop at all times. So I can close out of the about system dialog and it's still here. I can move it around if I want to. I think it's really neat. Now BOS uh, had the clock application and this was one of the applications in BOS that had the ability to make a replicant of it. So you see we've got this hand icon down here. We can just drag that. Maybe we want the clock to be over here. And I can click on this to uh, change the skin here. There's even this nice uh, BOS one or the uh, B incorporated logo. And again, this functionality was in BOS, but Haiku just expands it to more applications. And speaking of applications, if we go into the applications folder here, you'll see that Haiku has uh, way more applications applications than BOS did. It adds some new applications, it adds some modern replacements to some of the applications that were in BOS. For example, the web positive web browser is the replacement to BOS's net positive web browser. But this is a modern web browser, so you see it displays this haiku page totally fine. I can go to google.com, it'll display this page completely normally. And yeah, it displays the page and, you know, it performs pretty well, especially on this super old hardware that we've got the operating system installed on. So yeah, you've got a modern web browser. An application we have that was not in BOS is the activity monitor. So this gives you a live graph view of your RAM and CPU usage. And you can see both of these we can make replicants of. So if I want to add the CPU usage graph to my desktop, I can just drag here and drop it there. Maybe we'll do the same with the memory. And we'll drop that like right on top of that one. And there we go. Uh, I can drag in these to, you know, if I want it to be like really zoomed out or super zoomed in. Uh, and of course, we can do that in the actual application here, too. You can also right click on this to add additional things. So if I want to show CPU speed, if I want to show CPU usage combined, network receive, we can just really load this up with all kinds of stuff and just make the <laughs> make the graph like super small. Um, and just have all this stuff on the bottom. Um, page fault and yeah now you can like barely see the <laughs> see the graph at all but uh, you see if we expand the uh, window there then it, it shows up just fine so uh, but yeah that's the activity monitor and just to give you a rundown here of the applications that are in haiku that are not in bos so we've got activity monitor bpdf character map desk calc which is down here uh devices uh, you've got disk usage, drive setup, you've got Haiku Depot, which is kind of the modern replacement for the software valet applications. It's kind of like the app store where you can view and download uh, a ton of applications, actually. We'll get into this in a moment. Iconomatic is an icon creation tool. You've got Mail, which replaces Bmail that was in BOS. You've got a media converter. You've got P, which is a text editor. I'll just open it up here and briefly show you that. So there you go. You've got software updater pretty self-explanatory uh let's see here vision this is an irc client web positive we already took a look at and wonder brush this is like a paint uh slash you know arts creation tool you know you got brushes here so yeah you've got quite the variety of applications in here uh, though there are some things that were in bos 
that are not here in Haiku. Uh, the most notable thing, I think, is the 3D mix application. This was that 3D audio mixing tool that we briefly talked about in my BOS video. That is not in here, and there's no, like, modern replacement for it. We also don't have things like the CD burner and the CD player. Not that you'd really need those uh, if you're using this on, like, a modern system that probably wouldn't even have a CD drive anyway. One of the other things that Haiku does is it moves uh, some of the applications that were in the applications folder to other areas uh, you know on the system so uh, the demos folder here this is now where the clock and pulse applications live both of these were in BOS we were to look at the clock application the pulse application is the CPU like usage graph monitoring tool uh, you can see this time though since this is a dual core or at least a single core with hyper threading processor uh, it shows up as having two graphs here and it shows the name of the processor as well though it is a little bit off of the image here um, but yeah so that's pulse it is uh, still in here and uh, we do have a bunch of other stuff in demos as well uh, so we've got things like haiku 3d we do have things like the glt pot this was in bos and uh, we've got a version of it here too i think this is my favorite one out of all the things that were in the demos folder uh, notably missing from the demos folder though is the minesweeper application that is not in here and it hasn't been moved into applications or anything like that uh, also, speaking of things that they rearranged, the workspaces application that was in preferences is now in desktop applets. And this, uh, this desktop applets folder is an entirely new category in here, but this really makes sense. I think having the workspaces application in preferences was kind of a bizarre placement because, you know, this isn't really a preference. It's just like an application that lets you switch between multiple desktops. So we can do that here and you can see all of our replicants remain on each of our desktops. Uh, and speaking of replicants, Haiku gives you the ability to make a replicant out of the workspaces application, which is super nice. So I can drag this down here and let go of the mouse and um, now we've got a nice permanent widget for switching between our multiple desktops. One of the things I really want to show you in here is the launch box application because this creates a sort of taskbar quick launch dock thing that uh, you can have here. You can move it around wherever you want and you can pin applications to it to make them really easily accessible to you. So we've got a, a bunch of default ones here, but if I want to maybe let's uh, you know right click here, we can add a button and then all I got to do is go into applications or, you know, wherever I want. Let's say I want the uh, mail program. Well, that's already on here. Let's get uh, let's get the web positive web browser. I can drag that right to here. But now I've got a really easy way just to launch that whenever I want to. This honestly gives me uh, next step doc vibes. I don't know why that is. I think it's just because of the way that Haiku is laid out here. It does remind me of Next Step and Open Step in certain ways. And just having this dock here, like on the side of the screen, on the right side, that's where the Next Step dock was. Uh, so that, that, that just kind of, you know, makes me think of it. But uh, yeah, so we can have this here. You can, you know, pin a bunch of applications to it. Like I think you can just add like a bunch of buttons. And uh, I think as you add buttons, uh, no, it actually does not create like a scroll bar or anything, though let's see. Let's just keep trying to add more buttons and see if there's like a maximum here. Add, add, add. Yeah, it'll just go off the screen, so it, it doesn't like condense everything into having like a scroll bar. So you definitely would not want to have like a bunch of stuff on here if you're running the system at like a resolution. Like we're running this at 800 by 600, so having all this stuff on here doesn't really make sense because we can't get access to a lot of it. So, uh, although let's see here, settings. Oh, you can change the icon size. Look at that. That's super useful. So there we go. I just fit everything on this, uh, you know, on this one monitor here. Uh, we can also, I saw in there, there was, if I right click here, horizontal layout. Now this is giving me Mac OS 9 vibes. You know the little toolbar you can pull out from the left side of the screen? This is reminding me of that. So um, yeah, so you can have it in horizontal or vertical configuration. And let's just pin a bunch of like random stuff to it just to fill this up. Uh, and yes, you can have multiple shortcuts of the same thing. It wouldn't really make sense to do that, but I can make like these three here the same application. Let's get maybe magnify, sound recorder, styled edit. There we go. So, and you see some of the stuff we already had on here, but yeah. And let's maybe, uh, you know, right click here again, just make the icon size maybe a little bit larger and have that down here. And there you go. And just a quick side note here. You can see with all this stuff running in the background, we've, our CPU usage is definitely getting up there and I can hear the system fan is starting to really spin up. 
Uh, so maybe we want to close out of some of this to uh, let it relax a little bit. So there we go, I'm just dropping down. Now let's get back to user interface changes for a second here. One of the really cool things that Haiku adds is the ability to have multiple applications and windows combined into a single window with separate tabs. And what I mean by that is, like, for example, I've got the applications window opened up here uh, in the tracker file browser. So if I want to open up, let's say, activity monitor here, I can open this up. If I were to then drag this tab here and hold down the option key and I drag it on top of this applications tab, you can see how the outline of it changes there. If I let go, it will then combine these two separate applications into one window with separate tabs that I can then move around. Now, I mentioned this in the BOS video that I thought this was a feature in BOS, and some people in the comments did too. I got a couple people saying that they thought this was introduced in BOS. This was not in BOS at all. This was introduced in Haiku. Uh, in BOS, what you would have to do if you wanted to kind of mimic this ability is, let's go ahead and drag this out here. What you have to do is drag the window on top of the other window and hold down the Shift key, and then you can move the tab wherever you want on this window. So you can have it over here and then just kind of layer the windows on top of each other and sort of switch between them like as if they're a single window even though they're not. But Haiku makes it much easier. You can actually make it into a single window and drag the entire thing around. Now just a quick note, the option key when you're using a Windows keyboard anyway is mapped by default to the Windows key. But in this case, because I'm using the Model M, which does not have a Windows key, I had to open up the key map uh, preference panel here to modify that. So you can see here's where the Windows key normally is, and that's the option key. So I actually mapped the option key to the uh, caps lock key. So I can, let's say we want to drag the, the key map into here. I mean, you can do this with like so many applications here. Like I can open up, you know, the TV application. I can drag that in here. I mean, it's so cool. It's one of the coolest things about Haiku. One of my other favorite things about Haiku is the Haiku Depot, which is, like I mentioned earlier, the app store of sorts. So this gives you a listing of a bunch of packages that you can download and install on your system. And there's a lot of stuff in here. You'll see as it reads the repository data here, there's like over 4,000 things. There it is, 4,263 items. So I can scroll down here. You've got separate category listings as well but I'm just gonna download a uh, LibreOffice because I figure that's a good uh, demo program so I'll search for LibreOffice here and here we go LibreOffice x86 a full office productivity suite we will go ahead and install it now whenever you install a package it will let you know the changes that it has to make so sometimes that's download you know dependencies for the package you want to actually function properly so you see it's got a bunch of those here it has to uninstall some stuff as well so we'll hit apply changes and let it do its thing all right so the installation is completed we're going to close out of that and it asks us to restart so we'll do that in a moment here but yeah there's just a ton of stuff in here and there's also you can go in here to uh, preferences and go to repositories and you can add additional repositories for Haiku Depot to pull from uh, if you would like but let's go ahead and restart so we'll go to shutdown restart system so now we can go into applications here we've got a new LibreOffice folder and let's open up LibreOffice writer so I can write, you know, hello world, I am writing this document on Haiku. It's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just really cool to see a mainstream application like LibreOffice. Though, I don't know if you consider LibreOffice to be mainstream, but it's the first thing that I think of when I think of free alternatives to Microsoft Office. It's the first thing that comes to mind. And again, there's a ton of applications, over 4,000 that you can uh, install from the Haiku uh, package manager haiku depot i forgot the name of it for a second there but yeah that is a little demonstration of what haiku has to offer i've honestly been really impressed as i've been going through using this os and uh, i really think that with the system requirements being as low as they are for this thing that haiku could be a great candidate to install 
on old hardware. Of course, application support is a major factor, but again, if all you wanna do is have a machine to browse the web and do some email, other lightweight office stuff, it definitely might be worth checking out Haiku to install on an old system, or just mess around in a virtual machine because you can do that too. So if you wanna try Haiku for yourself, I'll have the download link below. And speaking of trying things, if learning about niche open source operating systems has gotten you wanting even more knowledge, why not check out today's video sponsor, Brilliant.org? Because they've got a ton of interactive courses that make it really enjoyable to learn about math, science, and technology. Now we've been talking about operating systems in this video, and you know what those require? Programming. I mean, I'm sure you could have guessed that, but if programming is something you're not so sure about, why not check out Brilliant's brand new Thinking in Code course, which helps you build a solid foundation for computational problem solving. What I love about Brilliant is how interactive it is. The visuals and modules in each course actually make learning fun. Plus, they've got thousands of lessons to go through, with brand new ones being added every single month. The best part is, you can try out all that Brilliant has to offer completely free for 30 days by heading over to brilliant.org slash michaelmjd. And if you're one of the first 200 people to do so, you'll also get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So be sure to check them out, and huge thanks to brilliant.org for making this video possible. That's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And if you really enjoyed this video and if you want to get early access to my future content, I do have a Patreon down below that you can check out as well. But either way, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.